Good morning and welcome back to Black Bear Forge. It's Sunday and you guessed it, it's hook of the week again. Last week we made this hook with a spiral scroll on the top that tapers nicely down to a point, has a ball in for the hook. And there are a lot of comments on this hook, but one person said, well, what if you do it the other way and put the ball in the middle and still use the... <clears throat> and then still use the ball as the hook. So the thing would hang more upside down, I assume, and this part wouldn't be here, but it would then be down in here. And I'm not sure exactly what that's gonna look like or exactly how we're gonna get it all to shape just right, but it was an intriguing idea. So I have another one of these cable spool bolts. This one's got the washer. We'll save that for another project sometime and just do exactly what we did the last time, only sort of inverted or backwards or however you want to look at it. We'll make the ball, we'll leave enough of this out of the scroll to make the hook, and then we'll taper this end a little bit and put a little bit of a scroll on this end just to make it look finished and do the same two dimples for screw holes up here and just see what we end up with. It's an intriguing idea, so thanks for the suggestion. I can't remember who said that. I think I'm gonna start with the end that'll be the top of this hook. And this still has some thread, so these may show a little bit in the finished project here. But they may forge down well enough you don't see them. If this was something structural up here, I would cut all that off because those threads could create weak points. But it may also add some character to the hook. Again, we forge our taper as a square to start with. Then we take the square down to an octagon. This is just standard practice for drawing a taper the vast majority of the time. Then once you have an octagon, you can just round that up. Now we have a nice smooth round taper. Let's go ahead and put the little scroll on the end of that. I'll probably scroll all the way up into the where it transitions from tapered to parallel. I think I'll go to a little lighter hammer for this just to make life easier. Then you're going to have to decide, do you just want that scroll to go off to one side or do you want it to center? I think in this case I kind of envisioned it off to one side, so that's where I'm going to leave it for now. And I'll make just a few little tweaks with the scrolling pliers here. Looks like I may need a smaller pair. There were also some suggestions to just leave the bolt head instead of going to a ball. Personally, I kind of like the ball idea better, but if you're making one, it's your hook. You do it the way you want to do it. And if you leave more of the thread showing on the other end, leaving the bolt head might be an interesting thing so people can tell it was a bolt. Of course, you can make the same hook without starting with a bolt. You can do it out of round rod and upset the end or lots of other ways you can get similar hooks without having to have the bolt. And I'm just going to do this one entirely at the anvil just to show that you don't have to have a swedge block to make a reasonably spherical ball. And 
You can work on both sides of the anvil, just depends on what you find most convenient. Just keep it moving as you round it up so you don't end up squishing it into an egg shape. Now this does leave kind of a divot in the very end, so I'm going to try and upset that back in. smoother surface on your anvil would be nice. This one's kind of chopped up and needs to be reground. We'll take a look at that in an upcoming video, hopefully this summer. So just try and keep things reasonably smooth if you can. And if you have to, it's okay to file. I think I'm going to taper this lightly just to make the ball a little bit more dramatic and make the bar leading up to it just a hair smaller. I think that will really enhance the look of the ball there. That definitely leaves a shoulder that'll need filing or grinding. I don't think I'll show that. I think I'll just go do it. We'll come back and shape the spiral. I want to leave enough to make the hook out of, and I'm not sure exactly what I want that to look like yet, so I'm hoping it kind of speaks to me as we get close. I'm just going to bend that over at about a 90 degree angle just to get it out of my way so we can scroll it this way and leave that sticking out. I'm not going to worry about the relationship between this and this scroll. Round bar you can twist to line up and it doesn't show like it would in square bar, so that gives us some freedom to figure all that out when we get there. It is going to make this a little bit harder to scroll up cleanly because it's kind of in the way, but I think we can get a good idea of what we're looking for here. And again, we may need to go to a scroll wrench or a pair of pliers to kind of work on this. going to be a considerably different looking thing I think than the first one but the inspiration comes from the same place. Just a lot of a lot of fiddling. Having this sticking out like that really makes it harder to both see what you're doing and to get in there and make the adjustments. But I think it's going about what I'm envision, anyways. I do think I want to take this, if it's going to hang like that, I do want this to be on the lower end. Seems more natural to me. I'm going to see if I can get that to wrap up that well. I may just let this one touch, just because it'll be quite a bit easier to deal with in the long run. 
kind of hard to say. Again, a lot of these things are matter of aesthetics, and your aesthetic may be different than mine. I think we're going to straighten this out and see where we are with where the hook part is. I'm going to use this pair of knee tongs that I think will get in there nice and close as my bending fork. It kind of opens that up nicely. And rotate that down to where I think it ought to be. It actually worked out pretty well, I think. But it's really deformed here. You can see it's not at all straight, but another place of ice is a simple press. It can be quite handy. That really helps line things back up. I'm going to go ahead and take this opportunity to line that end up. I think I want it to be a kind of an S spiral. So I'm going to make it go the opposite direction of the first one. And looking at that, I think it does need to stand straight up now. I didn't think so to start with, but now I do. These tongs are not as heavy duty as I would like for use as a bending fork. But they do work somewhat. Need to make more bending forks, apparently. That yeah, can go just a little further. Just put that in the vise where it holds the scroll nicely. Straighten that out and then I'm just let it kind of follow the natural curve here and see what we end up with. I think there's still some tweaking to do. But it is definitely a hook. I went ahead and quenched this. And even though this material does harden a little bit, it's going to make this a little bit easier to work with. And I like that shape of the hook a lot better. But then I'll bring it back up to heat to normalize the part I quenched, just in case it did get hard. Don't do any forging of the part you quenched if you're worried about your material hardening. Not that I know why you would quench it and then try to forge the quench part, but just in case you were thinking you could. So that is pretty much the finished hook, except for the dimples for the screws. Now it occurs to me you could heat this up nice and evenly and grab the hook part and pull it forward and spring that out from the wall a little bit. I don't know if there's any reason to do that, but it might be an interesting effect. Just play with these things and try a lot of different approaches. If you're just trying to figure out what you like the best, it's really easy to just mess around. But let's go ahead and put those dimples in. Now I will say that 
if I were to do this again, I would probably either spiral the bottom up more or the top or something because I think this hanging section is much longer than it needs to be for my taste. Push that back over a little off center. If you drop it, pick it up off the floor. I know, that's obvious. I'm going to let this cool and I'll put some Johnson's paste wax on it, my typical finish. You can use any finish you like and I'll drill some holes and then we'll take a look at it. Well, I think that's an interesting take on that same hook that I saw at Proto's Pizza in Denver. A completely different hook. Most people would never know that it was inspired by that hook, but sometimes that's the way these ideas go, that one thing leads to another, to another, to another, and before very long it doesn't look anything at all like the original inspiration, but without that little bit of inspiration, we might have never tried this. I don't know if I like this one better or if I don't like it better. It's just something a little bit different. I certainly think it's a good idea, and I think it's very unique. People would be really interested in that. Looking at it now that it's cool, I think we could have done a little bit better job right through here so that wasn't so tight. And if I were making these for sale, I might make a little scroll form so I can get them all even every time. Don't know if it's worth it for one or two, but something to consider. And I always make sure that I provide appropriate color matched screws for these things. These are slotted roundhead wood screws. You could use flathead. I think slotted heads always look better than Phillips. But I know a lot of people don't like messing with slotted heads. Just make sure they, they match. And I've done a video on how to treat screws so that you can get screws that match your ironwork. I'll link to that video right up here. And if you haven't seen that before, I encourage you to go take a look at it. Including the right hardware with your project really makes a difference. People put zinc plated hardware on with the ironwork and it's really kind of distracting. So providing the hardware for your customers is really a good idea. Now these hooks are based on the same concept. They aren't the same hook by any means. You could probably do a completely different version of both of these, different amounts of scrolling, scroll them different directions, make the scrolls kind of oval, make them more open, make them more closed. If you made a hundred of these completely different and took them to your local craft fair, people would look at that and say, oh, I like this one. Oh no, honey, I like this one better over here. Well, which one should we get? Well, let's get both of them or let's get all three because now I just saw this one over here and having choices and having a wide variety sometimes encourages people to spend a little bit more money at your table at that craft show and that can be a good thing. Now, if it's a website item and it's a catalog sort of a thing that this is the hook, it needs to be pretty similar to the one that you picture on your website or sometimes you get emails that people say, well, it doesn't look just like the one in the picture. It's not what I want. So just something to be aware of. This still has telltale signs of the original threads on that bolt in, and I kind of like the way that looks. It's a little bit of interest. People won't really know exactly what that is. And because we reforged this, they won't key off of that bolt head that this was thread. So they'll be kind of intrigued by that. But again, leave the bolt head on there and then they'll say, look, it's got a bolt head, it's got threads, this was a bolt once, what a cool thing you made out of a bolt. So just some final thoughts on the project. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, give it a thumbs up. If you haven't done so already, I would love it if you hit that subscribe button down there. Feel free to stick around, watch a few of the other videos, share the videos with your friends. If you'd like to provide financial support for the videos here at Black Bear Forge, there are links in the video description for both PayPal and Patreon. Those are merely donations. The content is free. In the meantime, I hope you have time in your day to get out to your shop, make something, but stay safe, wear your safety glasses, and we will see you for the next one.